Okay, so we are continuing our look at uh, binary cyclic codes. Okay, so we look at this ring Rm, which is the set of polynomials, binary polynomials. Degree is less than or equal to degree is less than or equal to n minus one. Okay, and uh, addition and multiplication are done below. X bar and plus one. Like I, said, I mean, I don't really have to say addition is done modulo x bar and plus one. It's trivial. So the multiplication really it makes a difference. Okay, and then we saw cyclic codes. Uh, basically, ideal for Nara. Okay, and then we saw the definition of an ideal. We saw that multiplication by x is the same as the shift because of which ideals become cyclic codes. And then uh, we saw the generator polynomial. So we saw all ideals are principal. Okay, so that an ideal i or a cyclic code can be thought out of being generated by g of x. Not only that, different polynomials, when, so, so only this, this, we can have a special g of x, a special generator, which is the least degree, least degree polynomial in, in i. Okay. In fact, I can say the least degree polynomial in i. Because it is only one of, there's only one. Okay, you don't have multiple least degree polynomials. It's unique. And not only that, we know that g of x divides x bar n plus one. Okay. So there's lots of nice uh, properties that ideals in R n satisfy, and that's uh, that's good. Okay. And then the last result that I showed for you is, if you have an ideal being generated by O of x. If I tell you who at O of x divides x bar of plus 1, okay, this implies what? O of x is the generator polynomial of i. Okay, so O of x is the generator polynomial of i. Okay, the reason is, so if you had a lower degree polynomial in i than A of x, that also has to divide x bar n plus 1 and a of x also has to divide x bar n plus 1. So, when all these things together you can put it together. Maybe you don't even need that that replace towards a bar n plus 1. So, well, let's see. Okay, I think uh, it has to work out in uh, some nice way like that. So, 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 I think, let, let me write down a proof. Let me see. If I write down a proof, I will see what is needed. Okay. So, suppose g of x equals m of x times a of x in Rn. So, what do I mean by saying g of x is m of x times a of x in Rn? Actually, g of x is m of x times a of x in uh, f2x. Okay, and then what should I do? I should do modulo x bar n plus 1. Okay, so that's how, that's how it works. Okay, so when you have something like this, what is true is g of x has to be equal to m of x times a of x plus some b of x times what? x to the power n plus 1. Okay. So, we know that a of x also divides x bar n plus 1. So, you will have a of x times m of x times, times b of x plus some, plus some e of x. Okay. Okay, what is this E of X? So we know, so you see, this is this is true. We know. Okay, so this is a nicer way of uh, writing it down. X bar n plus one is some A of X times E of X. All this is in F two only, okay, without any modulo. Okay, so this will have to be true. Okay, now G of X is here, which means clearly, what? We cannot have G a degree of G of X being lesser than degree of a of x. Okay, so this, this is in what? In a 
in F two X, right? Is that okay? Is it fine? No. Yes. Maybe. Okay. So A F X has to divide G F X in F two X itself. Okay. So that clearly implies it's a two work. Is that okay? So so if you have A X bar and plus one being A F X times C F X, what will be the degree of C F X? Degree of E F X will be n minus the degree of E F X, right? So that has to work out. So E F X has degree n minus that, and you can also look at the degree very carefully if you like. But but this has to work out. This is an F two F X itself, which means E F X has to divide G F X in F two F X. Okay, so this is basically a rewriting of the proof that I said. That if you have a generator polynomial, then it has to divide x bar n plus one, and then every other element of the of the of the ideal has to be a multiple of the generator polynomial in in F two X. Yes, okay? so it's pretty much the same proof. You can redo like this, and you'll get the answer. Okay? So the same idea is used here. All right. So this has to work out. So so you cannot have G F X being lesser degree than A F X. Okay? So same. Just A F X is okay. So at least that much is uh, very good. Okay. So this uh, this property that the generator polynomial has gives us immediately one nice characterization of the cyclic code. If you have an ideal being generated by G F X and G F X is the generator polynomial. And let's say the degree of G of X equals R. Okay, so this G of X is of the form G zero plus C one X plus R G G R X to the power R. The first thing is when I say degree of G of X is R, G R will not be zero, right? Right. If it is zero, then the degree will be not R. I can also argue that G zero will not be zero in the general problem. How do I argue that? Hmm? Yeah, you can take an x out of the remaining, and then what will happen? Of what is inside? But how do I know that that's in the ideal? It's x times that, no? Yeah, so it's a it's a cyclic shift of what is inside. So obviously, if you do enough cyclic shifts, you will go back to what's inside. So if this is zero, then you can produce. Some other element in the ideal which has lesser degree than R. Okay, so this will also not be zero. Okay, so these two things you can keep in mind. Good to know. So G of X is degree R. I can now find the size of the ideal. Okay, why is that? Because I know the ideal now is the set of all multiples of n of X times G of X. Okay, so it's not what degree of n of X. What can I say about degree of n of X? Less than or equal to n minus r minus one. Why can I say that? Because I know every multiple of g of x in f two x of degree less than or equal to n minus one is in the ideal. Okay, so both ways it works, right? If any multiple of g of x is definitely in the ideal, there's no problem. But I know all elements of i can also be are also multiples of g of x in f two x. So if I only do multiplication in f two x, when will I get polynomials inside r n? Only when the total degree is less than or equal to n minus one. So if g of x itself has degree r, you cannot make m of x have degree greater than n minus r minus one. So so degree has to be less than or equal to n minus r minus one. Only then the product will have degree product will have degree less than or equal to n minus one, and I'll have all the elements of it. Okay, I don't have any other elements. So so from here, size of i can be quickly found out. Size of i equals what? Two power n minus. Okay, so that's the number of uh, m of x that I can have. Okay, so that's degree less than equal to m minus r minus one. It means n minus r coefficients are there in m of x. So you pick either of them, one or two, one or one, two ways. So two power m minus r. Okay. So g of x gives you that. Not only that, if you if you know that I use a cyclic code, right? This idea also gives you the generator matrix. Okay, you can find the generator matrix. So basically, a basis vector for This case, a okay, very easy generator matrix is to put g of x in the first row. What do I mean when I say g of x in the first row? You put 
put G0, G1, all the way to ER and then we fill the remaining with R. Okay, so remember the total length has to be N, right? Okay, and then I can now shift, I can do X times G of X in the second one. Okay, then what will be X times G of X? I'll have 0 here, G0, 0, 0, not 0, GR minus 1, GR, 0 all the way. Okay, and then how many shifts do you have to do? The last one will be x bar 1 minus r minus 1 times g of x. Okay, and that will put gr at the very end point. So, you will have some g0 to gr. Okay, and that will be the generator. Why will that be the generator? You can see that in this multiplication. Okay, m of x times g of x can be written as m of x equals m0 plus m1 x plus one to m n minus r minus 1 x power of minus r minus 1. So, m of x times g of x can be written as when I multiply by g of x, it's m0 times g of x plus m1 times x g of x plus all the way down to m n minus r minus 1 times x power of minus r minus 1 times g of x. Okay. So, if I view each of these guys as a vector, I get this generator matrix. Okay. So, every code word, remember this is a code word, you can think of it as a code word polynomial which will be C0, C1 all the way to Cn minus 1. In terms of polynomials, it will be C0 plus C1x plus 1 to Cn minus 1 x power n minus 1. Okay. So, this polynomial is equal to the sum of all these guys and if I vary m0 to m n minus r minus 1, I get different <coughs> code words. So, that means clearly this is the basis. It's not too hard to argue that this will be the generator problem. Okay, all these things I think we saw briefly but anyway, so it's good to go over these things once again. So, this, this is the main idea. The main idea is this, the way this proof goes, you know. Any, any element of this ideal, if I say it's generated by a divisor of x bar n plus 1, it's important that, important that should be a, it should be something that divides x bar n plus 1. I have used that very clearly here, then it will turn out that that any element should be a multiple of g of x in f2 x itself and that gives you all the required properties. Okay, so that is uh, that's about uh, these guys. So, now we are going to go on and try and list out all the possible cyclic codes. So, of course, if I have to, so if we go back to the first property here. The important property is this thing. Okay. If I list out all the devices of x bar n plus 1, I have also listed out all the cyclic codes of length n. Right? I do not have to really worry beyond that. Okay. So, all devices of x bar n plus 1, of course, the devices should have binary coefficients. Okay. That is uh, that's further restriction. GSX has binary coefficients. So now the point is how do, I, how do I how do I do this? How do I find the basis of x bar n plus one? You already know the answer. Okay, so let me do that uh, a little bit more uh, slowly. Okay? So let's say factor in x bar n plus one. Okay. So the first thing is we will pick n to be odd. Okay, so if n is even, it turns out x bar n plus one will have repeated roots and all kinds of confusion will happen. So if n is even, what will happen? What can I do with n is even? Say n is 2 times m, then I can write this as x bar m plus 1 whole square. So I can keep on removing factors of 2 till I get an odd number. Okay, so it will be some x bar odd number plus 1 will raise to the power some power of 2. Okay, I can go down to that level. So I can remove all 2s from n. Okay, so I will assume n is odd and only factor that. Okay, so usually whenever we think of cyclic codes, binary cyclic codes, n will always be odd. Okay, you won't have an even length uh, cyclic code. I will tell you more about these things later on. Okay, so now you have m being odd. So, so if you want to factor x bar n plus one, you know it's the same as finding nth roots of unity. Okay, so if you want to find some number which, when raised to the power n, will give you one. Okay, so it's the same as finding some element in a large enough field which has order equal to n. Okay, so so it's good to find elements like that. Okay, so you can show a lot of things about x bar n plus one. In fact, uh, when n is odd x bar n plus 1 and its derivative, what is its derivative, formal derivative, n x to the power n minus 1. So, n is odd, it is going to become x bar n, n minus 1. 
and x bar n minus 1 and x bar n plus 1 do not have any common factors, they are relatively prime. Okay, so it can never have repeated roots if you have n being odd. Okay, so if you have so that is the standard result on polynomial stuff. Okay, so if you want a polynomial to have repeated roots, polynomial and its formal derivative okay, should have some GCD which is not one, they should have some common factor. Okay, the repeated root will occur both in the polynomial as well as in its derivative, right? If you take say x plus 1 squared and you do a, do a formal derivative, what do you get? 2 times x plus 1. So, the derivative also has that as a root. You can show this, it is not very hard to show, okay? So, so clearly it will not have any repeated roots and there are various other ways of showing it. At this point, I can prove it to you in various ways. But initially, if you want to develop it, that is how, that's how we do it, okay? So, n is odd, you need to find some, let us say, alpha, which is 2 of 2 power n, such that order of alpha equals 1, okay? If n is odd, it turns out this is always possible, okay? So, if n is odd, there exists m such that for n odd, there exists m such that n divides 2 power n minus 1. Okay, so, this is a fact which you can prove using various uh, results. I think we proved it earlier in class also. I am not going to repeat the proof here, but this is true. Okay, there exists n such that n divides 2 power n minus 1. In fact, usually you pick the smallest n. Smallest such one is usually chosen. Okay. Once you have this, okay, what you do is, uh, if you have beta and g of 2 power n being primitive, you can set alpha to be equal to 1. Beta power 2 power n minus 1 divided by n. Okay, this is what you have to set it to Okay, so watch out for all these things. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit confusing. Okay, so if you do this, then order of alpha is going to be equal to n. Okay, so I know x power n plus 1 has no repeated roots, and if you have an element of order alpha, order, order n in g of 2 power n, so I can find n roots for x bar n plus 1. Okay, so alpha clearly is the root of x bar n plus 1. In fact, alpha, alpha squared, alpha power 3, so on till alpha power n minus 1 are all distinct roots of x bar n plus 1 in g of 2 power n. Okay, so all this we've seen before, but let me repeat that once again. It's worth repeating. Okay, so if alpha did not have order n, then this may not be distinct. Okay, I won't be able to argue that. But since it has order n, I know it is distinct. Uh, distinct. Okay, once this is true, I know I can easily write x power n plus one now as x plus alpha times x plus alpha squared over over down to x plus alpha power n minus. Is it okay? So, did I get it right? No, 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 I am sorry. You also have 1. Okay. So, you also need 1 which you can write it as in any which way you want. So, let me write it at the beginning, I am sorry. So, <coughs> x power n plus 1 is you also have x plus 1. Okay. Alright. So, one nice thing about this result is, we see that x power n plus 1 factors into linear factors. That is a nice thing in this, but the only not so nice thing is that you have to deal with now g of 2 power n. Okay, you do not have binary factors. There is only one binary factor. Okay. Right. Everything else is non binary. Okay. So, you have to now call upon your uh, cyclotomic process idea and then combine the terms and get uh, minimal polynomials, which will now be binary. Okay, so, that, that is something we have to do. So, for that we have to find, uh, so next step is to find cyclotomic process of this guy modulo n under multiplication by 2. Okay. So, you will have so many cyclotomic process. Then according to the cyclotomic process, we group your powers of alpha 
and group your factors and when you multiply all the factors inside a simple polynomial process what will you get magically you will get a binary polynomial and that will be reducible in binary and all that okay so that way you can group these linear factors together according to cyclotomic process to get binary factor okay so this is the general uh, idea that we've been using but uh, yeah so the process themselves give you the degree of the polynomial okay so if depending on the cyclotomic process depending on the slight size of the cyclotomic process you know what degree that polynomial will have if you want to exactly find that polynomial explicitly you should do some multiplication in gf2 par m which you may not want to do if you don't want to do that at least the degree is there okay so the degree itself gives some information for us okay so that's what we're going to do so i'm going to take a couple of examples and let's take this first example i'll take when it was time okay so if you do that uh so first thing you have to find is uh, in which galois field do you have the primitive ninth root of unity okay so you may not even need to find it okay so let's try to find the second atomic process okay so remember the set i am looking for is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 that i am working with this is there I am going to take the elements and do this partitioning with the second atomic process. First thing will be zero. Okay. Next, when I start with one, I will have one, two, four, eight, seven, five. That's it. Okay. So that will be the first second atomic process. Next, we have to see what is left out. Will be three, three, six, six. Okay. And that covers everything. Okay. So I have three second atomic processes. I will call, call the first one as C zero. This one I call C1. This one I call C3. Okay, so it's usual to pick the smallest element in a cyclotomic process and make it the representative of the process and call it C3. Okay. So, so if I do this, uh, it turns out there will be so x bar n plus one will factor into three polynomials: n zero of x, n one of x, n three of x. Okay, n zero of x will be what? X plus one. N three of x will be X bar plus X plus one. Okay, so how do I know that will be X bar? How do I know it will be X bar plus X plus one? Yeah, it's a polynomial of degree two, and it is reducible. That immediately tells me it has to be X bar plus X plus one. Well, n one of X has multiple possibilities. We can pick the primitive six degree polynomial. It's possible to pick that. There will be some tables for it, but I know that the degree is six. Okay, so we've got degree two, degree one. Okay, so now. If you want to enumerate all cyclic codes of length nine, okay, so I have to just list out all possible generator polynomials. Okay, so what are the different possible GFs? Okay, and K also I'll write down. K is basically the dimension. Okay, so if you want to write down cyclic codes of length n equals nine, I have to list out the possible GFs. What are the different possible GFs? The first one could be one. So it's always a trivial thing, and that will give you k equals nine, right? So degree n minus degree, so it will be equal to nine. Okay. And then uh, next one is x plus one by itself. That will give me k eight. In fact, this will be the even weight code. This is the identity code. How do I know it will be the even weight code? Right. Yeah, one is a root, right? So, so all all code words are multiples of x plus one. So, what will happen if I put x equal to one in C of x? Right? It will be zero. Okay, so C of one is zero means what? C of x is C naught plus C one x plus C two x squared so on. If I put x equals one, I basically get the parity, right? C zero plus C one. That is zero means the parity is zero. So, it gives me the even weight code. So, x plus one always generates the even weight code. Okay, so, it's an easy Keep in mind. So, what else do you have? X squared plus x plus one, right? What will be the dimension here? Seven. So, this code is a is an interesting little code. It has really no no useful property. Okay, so you can think about it as as some various ways of thinking about it. But x squared plus x plus one is seven. Nine seven. It has 
it cannot have a minimum distance 3 can it have a minimum distance 3 a 9 7 code let me see if you remember can it have a minimum distance of 3 how do you answer this question don't think in any other way okay a 9 7 code has to have a parity set matrix right it will have 9 columns how many rows will it have 2 2 rows 9 columns can you have minimum distance 3 it's impossible that's how you answer these questions. You don't think of weird things. Whenever there's a question of minimum distance, pretty much the only way to answer it is with the parity check matrix. Okay, so that's the other methods, but usually parity check matrix will come to us. So clearly, 9, 7 will not have minimum distance. You can have minimum distance 3. What? What are you saying? Think about it. Rank is not the problem. Man. Oh my god, you have forgotten what the definition of minimum distance is. What is the definition of minimum distance? All the entries are binary, right? Binary, obviously it's binary. This is all binary. I am talking at binary cyclic codes. If I didn't have binary cyclic codes, why am I worried about combining the factors together? I, mean, I won't even worry about that. Okay, it's all binary. 9-7 code over a suitably large alphabet can have minimum distance 3, I have no problems with that, but binary it cannot have, okay, so the moment you go to the, uh, like, uh, you cannot have more than 3 columns, so four, four, 4 column will kill you, okay. So, x square plus x plus 1 is uh, not a very interesting code, and then what else can I do? I'm sorry, x cube plus 1 I can go to, what is x cube plus 1? This is the product of these two, so if you don't want to do a multiplication, it is write it like this and that will have 6 dimensions. Can you say anything more about that code? x cube plus 1, what do you think that? I'm sorry? It will also be even weight, it will be a subcode of the even weight code, right? Okay. Any other comments? Minimum distance, etc. Minimum distance is 2, right? It's got x cube plus 1. So, oh yeah. definitely minimum distance is 2. Okay. So, it's not very interesting from error correcting and all point of view. Okay. Minimum distance is going to be 2. How would I find minimum distance 2? That's clear, right? But x cube plus 1 is a third word and that plus that may weight 2. So, it's clearly minimum distance 2. Okay. And then, uh, what else? What is the next one which is interesting? It's this m1 of x. Okay, I don't know what it is. But I know it has got degree 6. So, what will be k? 3. Okay, what can I say? Can I say anything about this code? Can I say anything about the minimum distance of this code? Okay, so it turns out there is something called the BCH bound that we saw. We didn't see it in a wide enough generality, so I'll do it later on. But that's the only thing you can use for quickly finding minimum distance. Otherwise, you have to go and say find the parity check matrix and actually find something like that. You have to answer. You can't answer very precisely. So, it turns out if you use the BCH bound, what is called the BCH bound, which I will do later on, which basically relates the minimum distance to number of roots that are consecutive. Okay. So, here you can find that there are two consecutive roots, 1, 2, right? not more than that. So, the minimum distance is definitely greater than or equal to 3. Okay. That is the only thing you can say. Okay. So, anyway, we will come back to that later on. So, then your dimension is 3, that is easy enough to do. What else can we do? Anything else? x plus 1 times m1x. Right, this I can do, no? So what will be the k there? Two. Okay, what can I say about this guy? Yeah. So there are various things you can do with the BCS bound, even weight, etc. Lots of these things you can say. So what else do you have here? X square plus x plus one times m1 of x and that would be 1 ok what what code is that one? repetition so how would I find this for repetition code what will I get if I multiply these two things x1 plus x plus x square plus 1 to x bar 8 ok so let us see 
what what do you think m1 of x will be okay so this is x bar 9 plus 1 what what will m1 of x be yeah it's give me x bar 6 plus x bar 3 plus 1 do you get that so what will m1 of x be but basically yeah x bar 9 plus 1 by x bar 3 plus 1 right so it will end up being 1 plus x bar 3 plus x bar 6 so you can in fact find the uh, moon of x also explicitly if you like so all these things will also have some reasonable form so if you look at moon of x square 1 plus x bar 3 plus x bar 6 and it has got dimension 3 okay and this is g of x okay so once you know this 1 plus x bar 3 plus x bar 6 you can say something more about this code well, how do you think the code words of this code will look 1 plus x bar 3 plus x bar 6 will repeat right so you see m of x is going to be the no m1 of x is this guy so the message polynomial has degree only less than or equal to 2 okay so if i take a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 and multiply with this in fact every code word will have this form it will be some m0 m1 m2 and then what will happen the same thing will repeat m0 m1 m2 and then another m0 m1 m2 so this is basically the repetition code in this guys okay basically the same as three repet three repetitions of the 313 code okay so it's basically the same as the 313 code instead of repeating m0 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 m1 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 m2 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 i'm doing some weird permutation just for fun and doing m0 m1 m2 m2 m1 m2 so clearly there's no wonder that the minimum distance is three okay so you can also do it using dc is bound and all that if you don't know m1 of x you know m1 of x explicitly like in this scenario you can find a lot more details about how the code will look okay so you can look at this guy what will be x plus 1 times m1 of x yeah so i mean now that i know anyway i mean think about it so so, so something like this and it has to have even weight okay so when will it have even weight you have to think about it so you are repeating it three times so the weight of this each you can find yeah should what do you mean each of them should each I use yeah so out of m0 m1 and m2 two of them should have i mean out, yeah something like that has to happen so you can think about it that way and find out some more things the repetition code anyway is quite easy so let's give it up. okay so, so that's it. Those are all the cyclic codes of length nine. Okay. For instance, there is no cyclic code of dimension five. There's no cyclic code of dimension four. Okay. Right. So, actually, only five is the non-trivial statement because only from there I can quickly go to the other thing. How will I do that? If there is no cyclic code of the di dimension five, how do I know that there cannot be a cyclic code of dimension four? Yeah, it's dual, right? If there is a cyclic code of, if there is no cyclic code of dimension four. There cannot be a cyclic code of dimension five. Also. If there is a cyclic code of dimension five, its dual will also be cyclic, and that will be a dim dimension four cyclic code. So, so you can quickly rule out these cases. So, five and four are not possible for cyclic codes. Okay, so it's kind of like a non-trivial result which you cannot show directly. Okay, so if, if you just call some guy off the street who knows linear algebra and feels a way describe cyclic question and say can you show that there is no cyclic code of dimension 5 with length 9 it is slightly non-trivial it is not very clear why it should be it should not be it okay. comes from the factoring of x bar 9 plus 5 9 plus 1 it has only 7 types of factors it does not have a set of factors whose powers add up to 5 so that is the idea so slightly non-trivial uh, result ok so let us do maybe one more example which is uh, a little bit more interesting maybe ok I will take n equals 21 ok so 21 is uh, is interesting enough so, so if I do cyclic dynamic process once again I will have 0 then I have 1 2 4 8 16 11 ok and then I will have 3, 6, 12, that is it and then I will have 5, 10, 20, 19, 17, 13 right and then I will have 7, 
14 that's the point ok and then I have 9 18 15 that's it 9 18 15 you are correct have you covered everything Seventeen is there. There, eighteen, nineteen, so that's everything. Okay, so you will have an m zero of x, which is x plus one. Then you have an m one of x of degree six. Then you have an m three of x of degree three. You have an m five of x of degree six again, and then you have an m seven of x, which will actually be x squared plus x plus one. Okay, it cannot be anything else. And then you have an m nine of x. Okay. That's all the factors that are right. So these are all the these are all the applications. So now if you want to write down all cyclic codes and write down G of X and then K, right? It's a little bit more messy, you know. I mean you have so many more codes, but you have to pay some attention to it and then do it. Because you have the one and the x plus one and all that, so okay, you can get to the part quite easily. Then you have x plus one, twenty. Once again, the even weight code. And then the next one would be x squared plus x plus one, which would have to be nineteen. And then you have two possibilities for three, right? You can have x x plus one times x squared plus x plus one which will give you 18 or what yeah you can have several possibilities m3 of x you can also have m9 of x ok you can have m3 of x m9 of x and then uh, Okay, so I'm not going to write down the polynomial here. I'm, I'm just I'm just going to find out what k is possible. Okay, I'll ask you what k is possible. Let's see if any k is not possible. What about 17? Is it possible? Yes. Okay, degree four is possible, right? Degree five is possible. Degree six is possible. Degree seven is possible. Degree eight is possible. Degree nine is possible. Degree ten is possible. Eleven is possible. Right? Right? Then twelve is also possible. So it looks like. For all dimensions, you have it. It's enough if you check up to like 10, 10, 11, maybe. Okay, 10 is enough. It's enough if you check up to 10. If you see up to the degree 10 is possible, x bar n plus 1 by that will give you the other degree. Okay, so anyway, so it will all be okay. So it's enough. So all, all k's are possible. Seems like an interesting problem. I haven't seen it post anywhere. Maybe it is solved already. I have no idea. So what n? Right? Let's ask the question. Suppose we ask the question. For what n do you have cyclic codes for all k? Okay, I don't know if that problem is solved or not. So I don't even know if uh, this is a nice enough problem. But it seems like an interesting enough problem that has come up in, in our computation. Is there? So it seems crazy, right? Nine doesn't have something, and then. 21 seems to have everything, so maybe there is some nice uh, property that things are supposed to be satisfied for you to get it. Just think about it. If you come up with an answer, let me know. I don't think anybody else will be interested in it, but at least I am interested. So it seems like a curious little problem. Okay, so you can do this for other, other n also. Any other n also you can do this. So notice, I have never had to go through any trouble of finding any which field in which there is a primitive 21st root of unity, etc, etc. Nothing you have to do. Okay, you just have to do. Uh, very simple stuff you will get the answer ok so maybe we can try some other curious number so let's try one more curious kind of number maybe we try n equals uh, let's pick a prime number so let's say uh, 17 it was for fun right some uh, 17 is not such a bad number as you might think there are some things nice about it so where will you find a primitive 17 root of unity So for numbers of the form 2 power m plus 1, it is very easy to find uh, the answer, right? 2 power m plus 1 times 2 power m minus 1 is the same as 2 power 2m 
minus 1. So once you find a number like that, it's very easy to find. So in fact, 256 will be the field in which you will have. Okay, so that's some things you can use if you like. So, so this is not such a bad number. Okay, but let's try the second number process. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 1, 15, 13, 9, that's it. Okay, so it cannot be more than 8. Okay, that's a good goal for a number. Okay, and then 3, 6. Okay, all the remaining has to come, I think, but it should be 4 also, right? So, it should be a little bit careful. 3, 6, 12, 7, 14, 11, 5, 10. That's it. Okay, so you have a very, very simple looking factorization. So, you have a known effect and 3 effects. And there are very few k's that are possible here. Okay. So in fact this, this number of k's that are possible. You'll have uh, of course 17, then you have 16, then what? 9, no, 9, 8, that's it. And 1. Okay, 1 of course you should have. 17 is there. 2 also should be possible. No, no, no. One, only 1 is possible. And 0, I mean, usually people use a trivial 0. I mean, k equals 0 means what? A null code. Okay. It's got nothing. <laughs> so, I think all 0 code here. You can take just the all 0 code. Okay, so, that's trivially defined to have. No, it's no information. So, well, let's try one more just for fun. Okay, I'm just curious about what will happen. I have no idea. 90. Some number. I have no idea. What is the smallest time that will have? Uh, 19. So, one answer that is very easy is 19 itself. So, 2 power 19 minus 1, 19 is a prime number, right? So, 19 will divide 2 power 19 minus 1. Yes or no? Yes? Okay, think about it. That is a result. Okay. So, well, the way to find it is you have to count the number of numbers below n which are relatively prime to n. Okay. So, 2 power that number minus 1, n will always divide that number. Remember this rule, it is a, it's called Fermat's little theorem. It's not a very difficult thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, p minus 1. Yeah, it's 2 power 18. Right? Okay, so you can have to, you have to, you need to find the numbers that are less than 19, which are relatively prime to it. So 1 to 18, you have 18 of them. So 2 power 18 minus 1 will divide it. So up to 18 is fine, but then you can also have smaller factors. But let's check if 19 is such a bad number. It might just have one factor, so we'll see. Okay. 0 and then you have to just multiply and check this, right? So, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 14, 7, no, 7, right? And then 14, 9, 18, oh yeah, it's bad. If 18 comes in the ninth position, right? Then everything else will also come. Okay, how did I know that? Yeah. So all the minuses will come after this. Okay, so think about why I said that. Okay, so that's us uh, has to work out this way. So all the minuses of these case will come and you'll get uh, just one. Okay, so 19 is a very bad number for cyclic codes. Okay, so you have just the trivial uh, cyclic code. Okay. And you have the, only the trivial cyclic code, as in you have the identity and the all zero, and then you have even weight and repetition. So, that's all, nothing more. Is that right? Did I make a mistake? But okay. Okay, so there are, there are weird numbers in which strange things can happen. Usually, prime numbers are uh, a bit weird, some things like this can happen in uh, usually in prime numbers. Okay. Let me see if you can take up some nicer example. It's about whether uh, modulo 4 something happens or not, anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so these are uh, these are uh, factoring x bar n plus 1. You can have a lot of fun with it. In fact, a lot of interesting questions can be asked around this factoring. You might think it's, it's very silly, but there's very interesting number theory that can have come into play here. Okay, the cyclotomic process, when will they recur? It's an interesting little uh, number theoretic problem. Okay, I think it has a solution. It's not uh, really unsolved, but, but it's an interesting little question that a lot of uh, can have one can have a lot of fun. So 
since you asked me to do this in detail so final exam becomes more interesting <laughs> <laughs> so so what when you when you have a choice you have to exercise it very carefully <laughs> you don't exercise it carefully in going to properly like okay so that's the that's the that's about factoring so so factoring gives you the all the ideas okay so so the next thing that is usually done is the dual code okay so but anyway so let's 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 not worry about the dual code now the next thing that people talk about is zero substitution okay so we know that x bar n plus 1 factors into linear factors n g of 2 power n okay so again remember we will we'll take n to be odd always so i want to keep this again so there will be a smallest such m when we should lap in linear factors in g of 2 power n okay so 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 for a cyclic code uh it's, it's, this is defined by a generator polynomial g of x and this g of x divides x bar n plus 1 so what should happen to g of x also g of x will also factor into linear factors in to linear factors in g of 2 power m another way of putting it is all the roots if g of x has degree r it will have r distinct roots in g of 2 power m here okay, it's another way of expressing the same thing okay it has so if so let's say degree is equal to r okay g of x has r distinct roots in g of 2 power m okay this is the other way so when people say zeros of a cyclic code basically they are referring to these r distinct roots okay so zeros of cyclic code set of r okay let me say r the set of distinct roots of It is a general enough definition. The distinct roots of G of X are the zeros of the cyclic code. Okay, so so a lot of times people just will, they'll just provide the zeros of the cyclic code. Okay, it's enough if you provide the zeros of the cyclic code. So remember again, zeros of the cyclic code. Okay, so so one more thing we know is that the zeros of the cyclic code. What else do we know? So remember, uh, the all no cyclic code is there. Yeah, all that will come. But before that. Uh, even though it is in G of two power n, I know that the the roots of x x power n plus one are all powers of the primitive nth root of unity. Okay, so you are only have to look at the element of G of two power n, which has order n. Okay, you do you not? It cannot be an arbitrary. So the roots cannot be arbitrary elements of G of two power n. The roots will have to be powers of a primitive nth root of unity. Okay, so all the elements that are roots of x power n plus one. Will also have order dividing n. Okay, so that is also true. Okay, they will all be in fact written that can be written down as the powers of as the powers of an element of order what of of order n. Okay, so let me ask you another question here. Okay, since you know x bar n plus one cannot have more than n roots. Okay, so the other question I want to ask is can there be two elements of order n in two different elements of order n in G of two power n? Is that possible? Can there be two different elements? Okay, but then if there are two elements like that, one should be written. One should be. We should be able to write one as power of another element. Okay, why is that true? Okay, if there are two elements of G of two power n which both have order n, then you should definitely be able to write one as the power of the other one. Why is that true? Yeah, because one has to generate everything. Well, x bar n plus one cannot have more than n roots in. G of two power n. It has to have only n roots, right? So when you write up all the powers of an element of order n, that should end up that should give you all the roots of G of x power n plus one. You cannot have any other root which cannot be written as a power. Okay. 
but still there can be more than one element of order n. Okay. So you take the primitive n through the unity and raise it to a power which is relatively prime to n. Then you will get another element of order n itself. Okay. So, but it is all expressible as the powers of each other. Okay. This is the same result as saying every every field has only one primitive element. Has not one primitive element. Has can have multiple primitive elements. Then you can always write one as the power of the other. Okay, so it's always possible. We cannot do anything. The same principle is used again and again and again to prove these kind of results. Okay. All right. So the distinct roots of G of X are the zeros of the cyclic code, and usually people use the zeros to define the cyclic code. They say consider the cyclic code with zero set. This is the set of zeros, and that that will fully fits the cyclic code. Okay. And uh, if you look at the check polynomial, so so we define something called the check polynomial, right? So okay, so before that, I should point out also the other thing: the roots of GFX have to be unions of cyclotomic cosets. Okay, so that's the first thing. The roots are well, let me say zeros. Zeros are elements of order dividing n in G of two parts. Okay, so zeros are when I say R. What I mean is, see what I mean, right? So it cannot be any other element. Only those elements whose order divides n can be a zero of a cyclic code. Okay, that's 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 true. The other point is zeros will be zeros are unions of cyclotomic cosets. Why should they be unions of cyclotomic cosets? Otherwise, the factor will not be a will not be binary. Okay, so if you have one zero from a cyclotomic coset, all the other zeros will also come for free. So you have to take; you cannot drop, right? So otherwise, the thing will not be binary. Okay, so so what people will do is when they specify zeros of a binary cyclic code, they'll only specify one from each cyclotomic coset. Okay, just to simplify the notation a little. So you say, okay, it has this cyclotomic coset, that cyclotomic coset. Only pro only provide the representative. That's enough. Okay. We don't have to keep listing out all the zeros in full, very detail, because we know all the other cyclotomic processes anyway. Elements will come anyway. Okay. So that these two ideas are uh, used quite often when you define uh, cyclic codes. Uh, and then what else? So uh, I, can, I can move on to the check polynomial. So there's something called the check polynomial, which is again interesting. Okay, what is the property of the check polynomial? So basically, we define check polynomial with respect to B. Plus one divided by G of X. Okay, so it's a proper polynomial. It's also a factor of X bar n plus one. Okay, so this key divides X bar n plus one also. So one nice property is C of X belongs to the cyclic code if and only if C of X times H of X equals zero in R. Okay, so this is the main result, which uh, which is nice about the check polynomial. So one direction is very easy; the other direction is also not too bad. So as C of x times H of x being zero in R n, C of x times H of x should be some multiple of x bar n plus one, and then from there you can quickly decide that uh, C of x will have to be a multiple of G of x. So H of x divides uh, x bar n plus one. You take it to the other side; you get G of x. So G of x has to divide C of x. And that tells you CFX is a code word. Okay, so both directions are easy to prove here. It's not very hard. Is it okay? Okay, so see, remember how do you prove this? CFX is a is some m of x times g of x. So what will happen if I do CFX times h of x? I'll get m of x times g of x times h of x. What is g of x times h of x? X bar n plus one. So that has to become zero in R. Okay, the other way you say is CFX times h of x is actually m of x times some some e of x times x bar n plus one. We divide by h of x, we we'll get e of x times g of x, and that tells you c of x is a code. Okay, so we can prove it just based on these properties. What is nice about the check polynomial is it has a zero set, which is the complement of the zero set of the code. So okay, the zeros of check polynomial so is k zero one minus one, and you have a set minus with The zeros of the code. Okay, that's one thing. And the other thing is the check polynomial by itself also defines another cyclic code. You can also think of this cyclic code. Okay, and what will have zeros given by this? Okay, and this cyclic code 
and the original cyclic coil have an interesting connection. Okay, so it's not a very obvious kind of connection. So, so that needs a uh, little bit of more work, and that's where the dual comes in. Okay, so it turns out to take this HFX and you have to do a reversal. To do the reversal, that will also be a factor of x bar and plus one, and that will generate the dual code of the original. Okay, so those are things I think I proved. So I'm going to just write down the result here. So one can show that the dual of a cyclic code. Okay, is again a cyclic code. Okay, so if you have C being a cyclic code, okay, and C is equal to G of X, okay, you define H of X to be X bar n plus one by G of X. Okay, and then you do the following: you, you define something called H bar of X, which is X power degree of H of X. Times h of x inverse. Okay, so this is something I did when I when we did the dual. So I'm not going to prove this result for you. Okay. I'm not able to go to the next page. So I'm not going to prove this result for you. It turns out, first of all, h pop of x will also divide. Okay, so x bar n plus one. How do I prove that result? H pop of x. Divides x bar n plus one. Okay, right. So, so you use this fact that x bar n plus one is g of x times h of x, and then multiply both sides by x bar. Put x equals x inverse in both sides. So you get x bar minus n plus one g of x inverse h of x inverse, and then you multiply both sides by x bar n. Okay, so you get one plus x bar n back again on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you split to x n as degree of g of x plus Degree of h of x and take x bar degree of g of x into the g of x inverse and x bar degree of h of x into h of x inverse. Both of them will become proper polynomials and you'll get h bar of x times some g reversed of x to be x bar n plus one. So this is it. Second thing is most interesting result is c bar is this the cyclic code generated by h bar of x. Okay, so that's this is the result I showed before. So I'm not going to reprove this for you, but this is how it works. Okay. So now, how do I find zeros of the dual code? Okay, first of all, Z is the zero set, zero set of C. What is the zero set of dual? Will be what? Negative of the complement model, right? So you have to first take zero, one, two, n minus one, set minus z, and then what? You will do. So suppose I call this z complement, okay? And then I have to do minus z complement. Of course, you can do modulo n, or you can just stop with minus z complement, understanding that it's everything is modulo n. This is the zero set of it. Okay? How did I get that answer? Then I'm doing h of x inverse. Okay? So all the roots will become. Yeah. Inverses of each other, which is minus. In terms of powers, it's minus. Okay, so this is the main result. It's just interesting. The dual has minus z complement model. Okay, so I'll pick up from here on uh, Tuesday. Okay, and uh, we'll start work tomorrow.